With 3D printing, uh, you can just go directly from your 3D design to production. More and more people are starting to understand its capabilities. Forgetting the old days of just producing a prototype. And now going directly into production. Now you just start producing from day one. If a customer is large enough to implement a solution like this in their organization, then we start off with a um, business value assessment where we map their current procedures against industry standards. And based on that document, then we implement our portfolio, which consists of roughly about 7,000 products, um, in order to be able to optimize really the way that they do things uh, so that they can become a lot more efficient in their operations. Uh, here I want to present you an initiative of D2M Solutions. It's a um, car, 3D printed car, fully functional model. Uh, D2M Solutions is the only complete solution provider in the Middle East for complete design to manufacturing applications. And we've been in Dubai for the last five years now. Um, our engineers designed this in a 3D uh, design software, CATIA, from Dassault System. And it's fully printed the body car and the chassis, even the tires, printed in uh, Stratasys printers here in our workhouses, uh, D2M Solutions in Dubai. And our engineering team, uh, Mr. Leonardo Di Bilalis, designed the car. Well, we try and help our customers optimize the way they design products and then figure out the best way to produce them after. So obviously we carry technologies like PLM, Product Lifecycle Management. Uh, we work with Dassault on the 3D Experience platform. Uh, we cover 3D scanning and reverse engineering. And we also work with 3D printing and some casting solutions if our customers require metal parts. Here I have a drill head completely 3D printed. Uh, it's a display model for an exhibition required from uh, a customer of us. Uh, th the customer of us is an oil and gas company. They use, it, uh, they use this head drill to um, extract the oil from the offshore. So we, we decided to go to the print and packaging exhibition because we're actually showcasing a new solution for the design of the product and the packaging. We, um, we, we are introducing a new platform where companies can design the entire digital product, test it in a digital environment before they invest any money in a physical prototype. And then using certain tools like 3D printing, they'll be able to then start testing whatever they've designed in a physical form without having to invest in any tooling costs uh, and really shorten the design to delivery cycle so that at the end they can guarantee that they have a product which works for them and works for their customers. The concept is to test things in a digital environment using some kind of simulation so that you can test the strength, the resistance, all these issues that you'd have to do with a physical product uh, so that you can finalize 99.9% .9 of anything that could go wrong in a digital environment, which is free of course, and then proceed to your final production knowing that you're, you're almost definitely there.
because these solutions are modular, obviously customers that can't afford or aren't prepared yet to implement an entire solution in-house can take advantage of our services. So by saying that, maybe they want to go for the design environment but don't want to go for the 3D printing or the 3D scanning. In this instance, we help them out by um, allowing them to use our facilities in order to get the job done without having the overhead of having the equipment in-house. The problem with defense is that it's highly secretive. So we, we stumble across new applications every day. I mean, recently we did some uh, radoms for military and we tested it against the OEM part and the printed part performed twice as well as the OEM part. Obviously with defense budgets and the, the amount of spare parts they consume for them, this is a huge saving. And it's true just in time because you can have a digital library of parts and when one breaks you just click a button and it appears in a couple of hours so you don't have to stock or have this huge logistics monster behind trying to source these parts. In theory, any industry that uses 3D will need a prototype or will need some way to produce their product at some point. Uh, so the main industries that we cover are aerospace and defense, uh, packaging of course, um, education, which is a big part of our business, just uh, educating the next generation of engineers to use this type of technologies. We work with shipbuilding, we work with architecture offices and construction. So, as I said, pretty much anywhere where there's a 3D file, we have a solution to match that market. Uh, this is actually a power wall system. That means that it uses four projectors, which project at varied rates, which when wearing um, Flipker glasses, you get the impression that the model is coming out of the screen. So the type of glass would be this. Uh, you'll notice that these has some reflective targets on it. That's because with our system we have active tracking. So if you move your head, the display will move also. So you really get the idea that you're immersed in the actual product itself. Now, we talked a bit about 3D printing before. It's not always practical when you have large projects. So, when we're visualizing a train or a building or something of that scale, this type of solution is a lot more effective at giving um, the first steps for design approval to a customer. First of all, you have to say that there's no such thing as a bad technology when it comes to 3D printing. All technologies are good, but they're good for specific tasks. Uh, the systems that we carry, the FDM systems with the thermoplastics, suit our business because um, we use them primarily for end-use production or manufacturing tools. So we need the durability of the proper thermoplastics to do that. And engineers also like working with them because the um, products that come out of our systems mimic products that would have been made traditionally by injection molding, for example. So the properties are quite well known. Um, in recent years, you have an emergence of laser technologies, where you have laser sintering, um, SLS and SLA. Uh, these technologies offer the famous uh, metal printing. The big boom happened a couple of years ago with the introduction of your $1,000, $600 commercial machines. So for the first time, anyone could buy a 3D printer, have it in their house, that doesn't mean that they can be compared to much larger systems, because even though the concepts are the same, the capabilities are completely different. The speed has definitely improved, but what you need to look at most importantly is the speed of the process over the traditional manufacturing process. 
So in the past, whereby you had to make a mold and then injection mold a part to make plastic prototypes or machine it, you had all that programming and development to do before you could go into production. With 3D printing, uh, you can just go directly from your 3D design to production, cutting out all the steps in the middle. So where you'd have to wait six to eight weeks for a complex mold, now you just start producing uh, from day one. It's important to understand that 3D printing as a manufacturing technology will never replace some traditional methods for mass production because it's just not cost effective enough and it probably never will be. However, when you have low volume productions or bridge tooling, let's say before you get your permanent tool, uh, it's a very nice uh, tool to have in your hands to beat your competitor to the market because you can start producing from day one. Uh, even if it's at a slightly increased cost, but you still have the facility there to do that if you want to. So, um, the market is called DDM, Direct Digital Manufacturing. Um, it's a growing market. People are, more and more people are starting to understand its capabilities, uh, forgetting the old days of just producing a prototype, and now going directly into production with these systems. The printers we work with, a lot of R&D goes into the materials, so the um, developing specific materials for specific tasks. So we have examples of materials which are bar compatible. We have examples of materials which are aerospace certified, so they can go directly on aircraft. Um, and yeah, every couple of years you get two or three new materials aimed at specific applications. The type of solutions we sell are purely B2B, um, mainly because of the cost and the, um, the resources required to run a complete solution. Uh, B2C market is addressed quite well with the commercial printers that we mentioned before. So if someone wants to buy a printer for $1,000 just to do some inventing, that's fine. Uh, but we stick to what we know and we stick to where we know we can give benefit. So, that's where we stand. We're constantly enriching our portfolio with uh, new products or better products. And we plan to keep doing that until one day we can say that we can do absolutely everything and then uh, that'll be the end of that. The most important thing to look at when talking about 3D is to look at the right technology for your application, because as we said, there's no such thing as a bad technology, but some are better at specific applications. So identify where your industry stands and what your clientele will be, and then look at the limitations of that technology. If you have those two factors, it would be very hard to fail.